I don't know if you're up to date with the Civ universe, but this month, April 2021, there was a balance update to Civilization VI, and one Civ in particular got a very unbalanced balance update, and that Civ is none other than the Civ of my home country, Canada. So I thought, what better time is there to do a video showing off how overpowered the new Canadian civilization is in Civ 6. So like I said, we are going to be playing as Canada to get to use all of those lovely new buffs that they got during the latest update. And we will be playing on Deity, Difficulty, with pretty much standard everything except the temperature set to cold so we can have a little bit more tundra that will definitely suit our playstyle. We will also have the these four game modes on. I just think these four are the most fun and they add a lot to the game, but they won't really affect our main strategy too, too much. So let's just get started with the game. What we want to take advantage of as updated Wilfred Laurier are the new bonuses that Canada gets for building tile improvements in tundra landscapes. So the mines get extra production and farms get extra food, so it should make our tundra towns so much better. Okay, so this is a pretty decent looking start. We are a little bit far away from tundra, and remember, the difference now when we're going to be playing as Canada is that now you want to settle in tundra. Before, Canada was a sieve that could play in Tundra because they could build things like farms and they got bonuses to their tile improvements, but now the bonuses are so strong that you only really want to make your cities in Tundra. So I'm thinking that we take one step down here just to get a little bit more Tundra in our city's range and we settle right here. So here we go, we have founded our capital of Ottawa. So we're going to rush for mining off the bat because we do have these lovely tundra hills around us which will give us a huge bonus to the city's production if we can get a nice early builder in here and upgrade these to mines. Alright, so we're about to put down our first tundra mine and let's have a look. Boom, look at that production. The first improvement is turn 15 and mines are already giving me 4 production. So when I pick up Apprenticeship, my mines will get a plus one, leading to a five production mine that early into the game. It's going to be absolutely insane. So it appears we have this, we have found a natural wonder here, which is beautiful because it'll boost our astrology. So I might have to get some settlers up there and uh, maybe settle nearby to it. And we have discovered some lovely tundra to our south. We'll be able to fit in a lot of very good cities around here, I think. So the reason that we want astrology super quick is because we, is because our strategy that we are going to be using in this game revolves heavily around the overpowered holy site. And one of my favorite things to do in Civ 6 is to choose the choose a pantheon that boosts the adjacency of your holy sites. And then when you found a religion, you choose the religion that gives your holy sites production as well as faith. So that means every faith that your holy sites make will also make that city production. And that just is a super overpowered way to get heaps of faith and production in cities that have good holy sites. This is also why we put in the God King card, because we want to get this extra faith a little bit faster to get our pantheon. And in the Pantheon, we will choose the one that gives us adjacencies, holy site adjacency for surrounding Tundra tiles. And we are about to put down our first Tundra farm, which should give us four food on this tile, which is just great because our city, as you can tell, is not producing very much food. We actually don't have enough to even grow. So I'm going to lock in this tile, which should give us extra food, and we should be able to grow nice and easily now. Okay, so we just got really lucky. We found Hercules, which is one of the most one which is probably the best hero available in the game because he can finish districts um, in one turn by using one of his charges. So that's gonna help us a ton to get off to a really good start here. And we also managed to find 
um, the Void Singer Secret Society in one of the goodie huts we found, and that is just going to keep our faith income super high, and it's going to be also super helpful for our game. Alright, so we have our first settler out on the move, and I just put down a couple of tacks for my settling patterns that I'm going to do in the tundra here. I've tried to keep my cities pretty close together so I can use this all of this tundra land extremely well. And I think I will also be putting a city somewhere up here to get the get a piece of this natural wonder. But I want to get these tundra cities settled first because they are going to be super powerful once I get my pantheon and my religion online. All right. Our settler is in position here to found our next city and let's see what it is. We have founded Quebec City, which is the capital of my home province in fact. I'm starting to feel really Canadian now because I am selling my furs to Scotland for 11 gold per turn, which is just massive. I no way thought he was going to sell them to me for that much. That is going to skyrocket our gold per turn. It actually pretty much doubles it to 21 which is going to be huge because we do need to buy a builder over here to get this city going. So it's that time of the game where we got enough faith to choose a pantheon and of course we are going to go with holy site districts get plus one faith from adjacent tundra tiles which should should not only boost our faith income but it will now make this holy site here a plus five and this one down here will be a plus four when it is finished. So we managed to get a hold of Hercules, which is awesome because we can put him in Quebec City and then next turn we should be able to build our holy site for free. I will also be continuing to run these holy site prayers because we do want to get a quick religion in this game. And this right here is why Hercules is the most overpowered hero in the game. You can see this holy site here would normally take 37 turns to make, but in just one click, Boom, we now have a plus four holy site in this newly founded city. So we managed just to hit a golden age and we just got it 25 of 25, which means we can now print out settlers from our capital. Because of course we're gonna go for the monumentality golden age, which allows us to purchase civilian units with faith, meaning we can now buy settlers builders and traders with faith and that working with our super powered holy sites we should be able to have a massive settler spam in this era so we earned enough great profit points to get a great profit and we, we can now found our religion next turn so i think i'm gonna have to go ahead with the butterfly here as a symbol because that's what you see after you down a couple of fandermon beers which have a whopping 9% alcohol rating. I know what you're thinking, especially if you're used to drinking those low percentage beers. 9%, that's like almost a wine. But this stuff tastes great. It will get you absolutely rocked. And for that reason, I have to go with the Fendumont religion. If you're ever in Quebec and you go to the local grocery store, I really recommend picking up a couple of these. They will get you exactly where you want to go. And playing into our strategy here, we have to go with the work ethic belief because it's going to make our holy sites give us production as well, which is absolutely massive. And for the secondary belief, or even gold would be good, I might actually have to go with tithe here because I do plan on spreading my religion to each one of my cities. So and just like that, La Fin du Monde is the true path to salvation. Ignore all the other world religions. And since these this city... These two cities both had holy sites. When we founded our religion, it means we automatically get the faith spread there. And if we go in here, you can see the production is now skyrocketed to 17 with a plus five coming from holy sites. So my third settler is in place now and let's get him down. And it looks like we created the lovely city of Halifax. Okay. So we have our settler in position for our fourth city of the game, which is Victoria, BC. A lovely little city there. And of course, look at this. We are going to automatically put down a plus four holy site. And the next turn, we will be able to finish this holy site. 
because now on turn 69, <laughs> nice. we're going to run Hercules over on his last turn, finish the holy site, and now if we take a look at the city, and if we take a look at the city, we are now making four faith from the holy site, and all I need to do is get a single missionary over there to convert it, and then it'll be making another four production right away. Okay, so we got a big milestone here. We just completed theology, which means we have access to the scripture card, which makes our holy sites, which doubles our holy site adjacency. If we look at all of our holy sites, they should be providing us with tons of faith and science. So this one is a plus four holy site. This is giving us eight faith, eight production. And this is the city which I founded less than 10 turns ago. It's now making 12 production, eight faith, which is absolutely massive for a newly founded city. In Ottawa, we're getting 10 faith, 10 production. And in Quebec City, we are getting eight faith, eight, faith, eight production. So now our faith game is super strong. We're making 50 per turn and we can purchase settlers every five or six turns with this amount of faith. So we have our settler in position, but they're in a blizzard right now. Could you... I don't think we could possibly make a more Canadian city here. And let's see which one it is. And oh my goodness, it's none other than Montreal. Now this is actually the city where I am from, so I'm very excited to create it and to tell you about it. Our newest settler is in place here. And we will go ahead and found a new city. And it is none other than Vancouver. And we have another settler set up over here up top, and this city is the city of Winnipeg, which is ironic because um, it's probably going to be the hottest city in my empire, as it is the furthest north towards the equator. But in reality, Winnipeg is called, but what people like to call Winnipeg is Winterpeg because it is so cold there. And I think I will make this city a uh, a mausoleum city. So I'm going to get to work on the harbor. So we just unlocked Reform Church, which means we now can adopt the government of theocracy, making our faith go up even more. And right now we have a huge faith income. Other than that, our empire is looking good. I just wanted to show off some of the yields in the empire, which are absolutely mental. Look at these mines, they're one food, five mines, and even we have two food, five production lumber mills. Like these mines are just crazy right now. They're giving some of my cities absurd amount of production. Like this city was recently founded and it has 32. So right here, we just put down the wonderful city of Hamilton, Ontario, and I hope to use it as a production hub. So we just finished making uh, the mausoleum at Holocarnassus because we saved up a great engineer that we bought. This is just wonderful. This city, when it starts growing into all these ocean tiles, is going to be super good. And we were able to finish the harbor in here because we re-got Hercules with all of our faith income. And it looks like we're lined up for a golden age in the next era. So I know I've said this already, but I literally settled Hamilton. I'm not sure. I'll have to check and post how many turns, but not long ago, like it's still only at one population. And look at all these stats, like I'm making 16 production from Hamilton and 11 faith per turn. Like if we go in here, we can build these starter buildings in two turns and this is standard speed. So that's really crazy. It makes newly founded cities in the tundra like super overpowered, which I absolutely love. So we just got into the Renaissance era and we hit a golden age and we're actually the only player that we know of to be in a golden age right now, which is pretty good. Um, you can see that we are dominating the culture game. We're all the way on top now and our science is not doing too bad either considering I only have about two or three um, campus districts, so that's very nice. Oh, I'm not sure about what to do here because But it looks like this is all one continent because I do want to fill out all this area here with cities and There actually is a lot of room down here. I'm not gonna lie. So I think what I have to absolutely do is go Monumentality again. And then now I have Magnus established in Hamilton. So I can go right in here. Oh, I think I have to wait actually till I have two population, but it shouldn't be too long. In two turns, I'll just be able to start printing settlers from Hamilton pretty much every turn 
our every second turn with all the faith we are getting and then we'll have a true um tundra sieve like we will just stretch this whole continent and the tundra will all be ours pretty much exactly like real canada except except we're in the south instead of the north and i'm just so excited to get our mountie units because look at the appeal of our continent we're going to be able to put down so many national parks in here it's going to be crazy so about 100 faith later and we have an army of settlers running towards this barren waste over here so i can make it more of canada okay here we go our first city in this area here and then boom grantford and you can see in true Canadian fashion, we are friends with almost everybody in the game right now, which is pretty good. We haven't had a single war. Don't call me a rat, buddy! I'm not your buddy, friend! He's not your friend, guy! I'm not your guy, buddy! And we have another city in the Great Waste here, and it looks like it's Sherbrooke. And always the first thing I do in all of these new cities is look for the best holy site available okay so we just hit a milestone we just finished um getting the civic of colonialism and these are all pretty decent but what we're we are really excited about is the hockey rink so this is canada's unique building and it comes pretty late into the game but we got here pretty quick because of our high culture and what this does is it provides us with an amenity and one culture for each tundra tile that's surrounding it so this is gonna be a super amazing building for us considering we live only pretty much in um tundra if i were to put a hockey rink down next to the city of branford you can see this tile well we get a ton of areas for but you can see this tile becomes an amazing plus six culture Great. How awesome is that? And then once we get flight, of course, all of these tiles will start generating tourism as well, which will skyrocket us into um, the tourism win condition. We have our third city of this area lined up, and we're going to pop it down, and I think it's the lovely city of Peterborough. Okay, so I've just been going through all my cities and putting a nice hockey rink in pretty much every city to get that lovely 5-6 culture that it's giving me, which absolutely skyrocketed my culture. You can see I'm almost doubling, I'm pretty much doubling everybody's culture, and it looks great. Canada's never looked better. We got a hockey arena in every city. We're about to finish uh, St. Basil's over here to make these tundra tiles even better in Montreal and we got our preserves plotted out and we are four turns away from getting the new Mountie which can place two national parks instead of one so I'm going to be putting down national parks all over this area here it's going to look amazing and if we take a look here at the world rankings I have five of 92 tourists so I'm I'm winning there uh, you can see I am getting 168 bonus from luxury resource monopolies so if you haven't played too much with the Monopoly game mode, this just means if you go into your um, global resources, if you have a Monopoly control over a certain resource, then you get a bonus to your tourism from it. So like you can see here, I have uh, a Monopoly on Jade and Furs. So very Canadian-like. We know that Canada loves trading away their furs, and we know they like Jade. This is going to be the million dollar rock. makes people do crazy things all right so there's st basil's looking very nice look at the culture that is going to be generating for us now 28 culture just for this one city all right so we just hit conservation which means we have access to the mountie who is uh normally a cavalry replacement unit i'm pretty sure but that's not how we're going to be using our Mounties, that's for sure. 
So you can see here a naturalist which can create one national park costs 510 faith, but a mountie which can create two national parks and is an actual unit that can be used to fight only costs 490 faith. So I'm just going to be buying these guys all over my empire and creating as many national parks as possible, which should help skyrocket my tourism, my culture, my appeal. It's just going to be great. It's got the 725 on shipment ready to go. Game. Wow. Oh. What the fuck? What, what is happening? What? what, what? <laughs> A builder in here so I can put some forests down because with conservation I can now builders can now plant woods which is nice because that can improve the appeal in places where I won't be able to build a national park and since I'm making so much faith it's so easy to purchase these guys it's actually crazy and we're already lined up for another golden age would you look at that boom so just like that we got the world's first national park and here it is in Vancouver. And you see it's going to be providing us 18 tourism from this one national park. Because I think the way the national parks work, it adds up the total appeal of all the tiles on the national park. And that's the tourism we get. So we're going to be making heaps of tourism because all of the appeal in our empire, as you can see, is totally... Um, is almost all breathtaking because of these lovely mountains we have. So I'm just trying to squeeze in as many national parks as possible. So last turn, our tourism was... Get out of my face, Koopy. What are you doing? Alright, champ. Whatever you say. So last turn, you can see I'm going to put it on screen. The tourism was 92. Three national parks later, we're at 144 tourism. So if we go to the world rankings... We go to the culture you can see it already says we're gonna win in 68 turns but i have a feeling we'll be able to get that down a bunch plant a forest down here so i want to put a national park down here but if we look at our appeal it's this isn't high enough to put one it will be high enough when we make this grow but i still want to get it done before that so i think if i put a forest down on this tile here we should be able to do it so i've reached the point in the game where i'm just I am just making heroes so I can delete them and then get their heroic relic because it caught it counts for a good amount of uh, tourism six tourism is nothing to laugh at so as you can see in Guelph over here these barbarians actually came and pillaged my hockey rink can you believe that you just can't be going you can't be doing that to a Canadian so I brought the Mounties in and now he's ready to clean up Look at that. That's exactly what the Mounties are for. They should get a bonus to the combat strength if enraged. What are these guys doing with the spearmen over here? Fez, what are you doing? Another thing about having all these national parts that's absolutely bonkers is just the amenities that you ha I have in all my cities. A lot of these cities have plus four amenities, which gives a 10% bonus to all your yields. So look at that, that's like three production in this city. This city here, three production. This one has plus five, so I'm getting 20% 20 product, 20 production here. So 6.3 production is coming just from amenities. This city's making me 65 culture in Montreal. Just like real Canada, Montreal's carrying the, uh, carrying the culture game. And we are one turn away from researching flight, which will raise my tourism by a ton because my 460 culture will now count towards tourism. And look at that, we have flight, and look at the tourism, it went up by almost 100. We'll see what it says, we're at 60 of 136 tourists, other guys are only at 4 at this point. It's happening, we have attracted enough tourists to have a dominant culture over the Maori, which is great. We have 70, you can see we have 74 tourists, and um, you can see the culture is just huge, tourism huge. And look at some of these nice tiles we have now that a lot of our groves are being completed. Look at this one over here. This place is just beautiful. There's nothing better than seeing national park tiles that have all of these yields on them. Like, look at my science. I almost have... I'm almost um, first in science in the game, and I literally have two campuses. I have two campuses, and I'm almost first in science. That just shows you how good um, preserves can be.
So it is turn 183 and we have surmounted everybody's culture except for Robert the Bruce. And it says we will be winning in five turns. And that would be a pretty good win time. Anything under 200 I'd be super happy with for this game. So we're nearing the end here. It says three turns to victory. We're making a whopping 485 tourism, 547 culture absolutely destroying the computer we have 273 science which is more than the computer and we're not even going for a science victory so this is absolutely insane and this is on deity the highest difficulty in the game we're stealing more great works from uh from england because we don't have enough we just want them all to be ours <laughs> i love how it says my culture became dominant above scotland but uh I still didn't win the game. So we just hit the 500 tourism mark. It is turn 188, 1270 AD. I'm gonna go ahead and shift, uh, enter my turn. And we should win right here. And there it is. So we have won as Canada on deity difficulty before turn 200. Now, if that isn't enough, evidence that Canada is OP because of this new patch, I don't know what is. The reason why I think that this patch makes Canada super overpowered is because before they were already a good sieve in the late game, but now this patch makes them good right from the beginning. With those Tundra benefits, they don't have any problem settling. Um, there'll always be room for them to settle because the AI doesn't like settling in Tundra. They simply cannot do it. Like, they'll settle everywhere else before Tundra, but Canada actually wants to settle in Tundra. If we go back into my game and take a look at some of these Hello cities, there. right? If these guys would shut up, man, like seriously. I'm trying to show off here. So if we look at some of these cities, Winnipeg is a pretty good city. This is like a good normal city. You can see I have a lot of districts, 50 culture. Um, Halifax too is a pretty good city. But look at these Tundra cities. They're absolutely mental. Montreal has 91 culture coming from it, and it's settled right in the heart of Tundra. So as Canada, you want to play in Tundra. You don't even want to settle. Like, I had more room up where I could settle, but I just wanted to settle all of the Tundra in the whole game. And that's what we did, and uh, it went pretty well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun playing as, um, as my own country. I love that Canada's in Civ, and it's super fun that they're actually good now. It's super fun to play as them. I highly recommend it if you guys haven't done it yet. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.